Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. And may I say what a pleasure it is to serve under your chairmanship. Today, I have the enormous pleasure of uh, bringing forward this Westminster Hall debate entitled Swansea, a City of Culture 2021. You may be asking, what is a city of culture and why is it so important? Well, the UK City of Culture is an award given to a city in the UK every four years, and that city holds a title for a period of one year. It was devised to support the sustainable regeneration of cities by positioning culture at the heart of city planning and development. Having previously reached the shortlist, for the UK City of Culture in 2017, Swansea is competing to be the City of Culture 2021 and has once again been shortlisted. The panel of judges will be making uh, this decision this coming Thursday on the 7th of December and it will be announced by my right honourable friend, the Minister, and we could encourage him to announce it through this debate if he'd like to. <laughs> He's being coy. He's being coy. The current holder of the title, of course, is Hull and they need to be congratulated on their excellent year as Britain's culture capital. The winning city receives the right to hold various prestigious cultural events, as well as encouraging inward investment. While there is no monetary support or prize attached to the UK City of Culture title, Hull has successfully secured 15 million in government funding, as well as three million from the Arts Council England and three million from the Heritage Lottery Fund. In the first half of its year as the UK City of Culture, Hull hosted at least 450 events, exhibitions and cultural activities, attracting over 1.4 million visits. It is estimated that Hull City of Culture year will lead to a 1 billion boost for the economy and an extra 3,500 jobs. Swansea, Mr Wilson, could replicate this and indeed more. I feel that Swansea should be the next City of Culture. Not because of unfairness, as we missed out in 2017. Not because a city from Wales hasn't ever played host to this title. And not because Coventry, Paisley, Sunderland or Stoke would not make a worthy city of culture. I'll just finish this if I may. But because Swansea deserves it, and we all here know just how it would allow Swansea to develop and begin a new chapter for this ever-evolving city. I'm grateful to the Honourable Member and I congratulate him. Uh, he's absolutely right to say that Swansea deserves it in his own right. But I think he's also right to say that Wales deserves it. Because here is a nation full of culture and wants to share that with the rest of the world. I am, Mr Wilson, from north of Wales, but I'll be supporting this all Wales bid to have the city of culture. Although my, I have to come, and I've come off the fence because my son-in-law is from Coventry and my friends are from Sunderland, but I'm sticking with the Welsh bid because we deserve it. <laughs> I couldn't agree with the honourable gentleman uh, any more. Uh, I'm, in fact, I'm even surprised and delighted that he's got some friends as well, so that, that's even better than that. Thank you. You lead me on to a very good point, in fact, because members here may be wondering why the member for Brecon and Radnorshire is bringing forward this debate that would see benefit, in, so some people would think, to South Wales Swansea constituencies. Well, my northern Radnorshire boundary is 100 miles from the city of Swansea. But the southern tip of my constituency is only 15 miles away from the city centre. I firmly believe, like my honourable friend, that if successful, and I hope it will be, the city of culture status will not only benefit my constituents in the up and coming cultural centre of Astragunlice and the upper Swansea Valley, but it will be a benefit right across my constituency and it will benefit the whole of Wales. North, east and west of Swansea, I'm not saying south, as of course those of you who know Swansea well will know that you'll get your feet wet and a little bit more wet if you decide to go south. Because Swansea is where the coast meets the city. It's where the city meets the country. And it's where culture has a natural thread that runs through it like an artery. I was lucky enough to be born and brought up at the bottom of the Swansea Valley in what was then a very rural area. Now, of course... It's developed as a suburb of Swansea itself. Since the time I was a child, Swansea's changed considerably and continues to change. And it is an area that constantly embraces change, hence the reason why it is a cosmopolitan city it is today. But then Swansea has had an ever-changing past. 
In the late 18th and early 19th century, it was one of the top seaside resorts in the UK, a true destination for tourists. Its long sandy beach brought in tourists from far and wide, and the continuation of the coastline around the Gower Peninsula rivaled any beauty spot in the country. It was later, of course, to become the Britain's first area of outstanding natural beauty. Then came a great challenge to the town, a town as it was then, tourism or industrialization. In 1840, a new identity was forged, new docks were built, foundries established, and Swansea became a key center of the world's global copper industry. Wales can lay claim to be the first world's industrial nation. By the late 19th century, South Wales was a global center for heavy industry, coal production, and maritime trade, and Swansea was central to this. Throughout the great industrial age, Swansea expanded considerably, thus bringing great wealth and also great poverty to the area. The bustling town was then reduced to rubble during the blitz of the Second World War. Swansea was a massive target as a major port with its ammunition-making factories and foundries. But we're talking about Swansea and its people. Like the proverbial phoenix rising from the ashes, the centre was rebuilt with new buildings emerging and new life was brought into the city of this, uh, into the centre of this still important city. I'll happily give way. I thank the member for giving way and congratulate him on securing the debate, obviously very timely given the week that's in it. Uh, would he accept from me, as I live in and represent part of the City of London, Derry, which was the first ever UK City of Culture in, the, in 2013, that uh, the phoenix rising from the ashes is a very, very appropriate euphemism that, that he has used, but that one of the things that Swansea, if successful, need to do is to harness the communities across the city and region of, of, of South Wales uh, behind the bid, but beyond the bid, yeah. there needs to be legacy projects there which people can say that is a, a, a tribute to what was achieved as a result of Swansea being successful if they are on Thursday. Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention, and Londonderry were a prime example, of course, uh, to this, and we, we listen with interest and we, we take his words uh, very seriously. Of course, it wasn't long after the Blitz that change would again be on the horizon for Swansea, as in the 1970s and 80s, as the old industrial areas and manufacturing industries were closing, vast areas of previously productive commercial and factory sites became obsolete and turned into waste grounds. Swansea was getting ready for yet another period of change. The old Swansea Vale, once dominated by the smoke and pollution of heavy industry, was now becoming a magnet of industries of a different type, a modern industrial park with high-tech companies, together with a progressive out-of-town shopping centre. The city centre still includes a busy shopping core. A core which is at its centre is the legendary Swansea Market, where you can still buy that great Welsh delicacy, lava bread, to go with your cockles and bacon, followed, of course, by the cultural Welsh cake. But there is still a way to go to fully regenerate the city and see Swansea become the world leader it once was. And being awarded the City of Culture Prize will be the catalyst for that transformation. I will happily give way. I thank you for giving way and congratulate him on bringing this to Westminster Hall for, for consideration. I, I, I wish him and, and indeed all of the MPs for, for Wales every, uh, every best wish for, for Thursday and do hope that you are successful. And, and, and part of that success, I think it does spin off, is what my honourable friend and colleague from uh, East London Derry referred to. Not only did London Derry gain from the city of culture, but the whole of Northern Ireland gained. And I think the whole of Wales will gain from Swansea's success. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thank the honourable gentleman for his intervention, and I'm sure that the minister is hearing that we have cross-country, cross-border, cross-country support for the Swansea bid, and I'm sure... That, that will weigh heavily with, his, with the decision. I'll happily give way. I'm very grateful to him. Um, I would like to make a confession, actually. Uh, although I represent Cardiff Central, I am actually a Jack. I was born in Swansea. And so um, I join him in uh, congratu congratulating him on bringing this debate, but also join him in hoping that Swansea is successful on Thursday, because not only will it bring benefit to Swansea, a lot of the people who will be travelling to Swansea to see the city of culture will travel through Cardiff. Chris Davies. Well, we are honoured that you have made such a confession here in this chamber. 
and you should be truly praised for such a confessional. Uh, Mr. Wilson, we have heard from me the history, and we have heard the geography of Swansea. But what of the culture, you may be asking? Some examples of cultural initiatives which Swansea have run are hosting the British Science Festival, the International Dylan Thomas Prize, an artist-led regeneration of the high street, a range of arts and literature festivals, and the work of the theatre companies at large. One of Swansea's most famous sons is, of course, Dylan Thomas, who was born in the city and who based much of his early working life on his experience growing up there. Do Not Go Gentle is a new fringe festival in the Uplands area of the city, where Dylan Thomas was born and where he lived for many years. The Grand Theatre is the largest in the region, hosting many West End productions as well as several independent theatre companies who are also based there. In the summer, outdoor Shakespearean performances are a regular feature at Oystermouth Castle, and I know my, uh, the Honourable Lady for Swansea East is a regular attender at those uh, Shakespearean performances. Singleton Park is also the venue for a number of parties and concerts, from dance music to outdoor BBC proms in the park. In addition, every summer they host an international jazz festival, and every autumn there is an international arts festival, when international orchestras and soloists perform in unusual venues, such as empty department stores, as well as, of course, the Brangwyn Hall, a concert venue in Swansea, praised for its acoustics for recitals, architectural pieces and chamber music alike, not to mention its collection of the Brangwyn paintings. And somewhere, as a young member prior to becoming a member of parliament, I sang as a chorister. Standing, and yes, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the honourable members opposite will be terribly sorry they missed that, but um, there we are, I'm sure. The, I'm sure the recordings are available at a, at a super market near you. Standing near Victoria Park on the coast road is the Patty Pavilion. This is used as a venue that stages live music and events, and named after that great Victorian opera singer Dame Adelina Patty, who built her home at Craigenorse in the upper Swansea Valley at the bottom of Brecon and Radnorshire constituency. There are many independent galleries and artist studios, such as the recently expanded Glyn Vivian Art Gallery, a regional partner to the Tate, as well as a large number of live music venues. The Liberty Stadium is home to Wales' only premier division. Lucky you made that confession earlier. I will give way. Thank you for giving way again. Um, I wouldn't place too much emphasis on that, bearing in mind that Swansea are currently bottom of the Premiership and Cardiff City are second in the Championship. Mm. Just as we are only partway through the Brexit negotiations, we are only partway through the football season, so let's see what happens there. The uh, football, that's, uh, that's unfair. Um, of course, the, the stadium, the Liberty Stadium, has a capacity of 30,000 when used as a music or event venue. Uh, there's also the Great Hall and Taliesin Arts Centre, which are owned and managed by Swansea University. The venue hosts a broad programme of events, including cinema screenings, an average of 10 visiting exhibitions per year, and a variety of live performances, from dance and drama to jazz and world music. Then, of course, there's the rugby, the football, the churches and chapels, the great food and drink, the places of learning, the schools and the colleges, and of course the University of Swansea with its outstanding New Jersey Marine campus. And then there's the Welsh language, which is renowned throughout the world. And who could fail to be moved when Welsh song and dance, including our many Welsh male voice choirs, lead the world? I'll happily give way. speech. Um, he mentioned the Swansea Bay campus. One, one thing I, I think is very important for us to note for the record is that that campus is actually located in the great constituency of Aberavon. So I, I do hope that that's been noted uh, by Hansard. Uh, I, I would also say that, um, of course, with the Internet Coast proposal, which we very much hope the uh, government will give its full support to, does the Honourable Gentleman agree that uh, City of Culture would be a, a fantastic force multiplier for that uh, investment in the Swansea Bay City region. 
I'm delighted that the Honourable Member for Aberavon is supportive of this scheme. Of course, Aberavon looks on to Swansea and uh, anything that benefits Swansea or indeed Aberavon will be of great benefit to Wales as a whole. Could I, Mr Wilson, touch on the fact that Swansea has produced many great sons and daughters who have turned into cultural icons of today and, of course, of yesteryear? The household names include from broadcasting, uh, Hugh Edwards, Ian Hislop, and uh, Winford Vaughan Thomas, musicians such as Sir Carl Jenkins, Bonnie Tyler and Dire Straits, uh, Terry Williams, rugby and footballs, John and Mel Charles, Dean Saunders, Dan Bigger and Shane Williams, acting Sir Harry Seacombe, Rob Bryden and Catherine Zeta-Jones, writers like Dylan Thomas and Iris Gower, from the law, in this place in the upper chamber here, Lord Thomas of Cungir, the former Lord Chief Justice, and from the church, of course, uh, Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury. There are many, many great politicians who have come from Swansea. Legends, every one of them. But I shall save on their modesty and I shan't name anyone directly. Swansea, Mr Wilson, is now ready for the next chapter in its varied existence. It has the infrastructure in place to provide high quality cultural services to its communities and host a world class product. But cooperation, collaboration, and skills development across the sector, accessible to all its diverse communities, has not yet been realised. Swansea can build its reputation as a place of culture, learning, and innovation. Although the universities are making great strides here, many of its communities have low confidence and a tendency to look inwards rather than outwards. I strongly believe that the UK City of Culture can help in overcoming this in ways that would be otherwise unachievable. I am confident that not only can Swansea deliver an exemplar year for the UK artistically and logistically, but that social and economic impacts will be strong and wildly felt. Legacy and sustainability, as my honourable friend mentioned, is key to the bid and the bid committee are agreeing the structures and delivery partners to secure that this long-term engagement, skills development and employment opportunities, alongside the continuation of audience development and funding partnerships, succeed. Having the opportunity to share this, to tell a new story about Swansea, and to enable its communities to see themselves and their city through a new lens, will build connectivity, cohesion, confidence and aspiration that will secure a better future for the city. A better future for Swansea supports a much wider hinterland. Wales as a nation, and ultimately, relations for the UK and its global profile as it stands side by side on an international platform celebrating and broadcasting world-class productions. In conclusion, Mr Wilson, may I congratulate the team led by the city and county of Swansea in putting together the excellent bid and also the partner organisations for their continued and enthusiastic support. I hope that the city of Swansea, so described by the poet Dylan Thomas as the ugly, lovely town, crawling, sprawling, by the side of long and splendid curving shore, will become the 2001 City of Culture. Thank you. The question is that this house has considered Swansea's bid to be City of Culture 2021.